Hello and welcome. My name is Torsten. I'm head of support here at ResResult and today I want to show you how to get started with your Dragbox Passive once you receive it. So what is inside the Dragbox Passive case? Apparently and most importantly, two times the Dragbox Passive. Moreover, you will find two 10 stakes to fix the Dragbox Passive in the ground. You will also find two mounts to fix the Dragbox on a tripod on a quarter UNC thread. And last but not least, you will find a duo trackbox charger to charge two drag boxes at a time. And the charger will be connected to the same charger as you also know from the loop box, for example. What you need to do next is open the track box lid with a 2.5 mm Allen key and insert the SIM card into the SIM card slot. until you hear that it fits in. Afterwards, you can close the lid and screw the screws in again. You might wonder, what should you do if your SIM card has a pin? There's no option, there's no ability to enter a pin here in the track box because apparently it does not have a keyboard. So we recommend to have a SIM card without a pin, but of course there is SIM cards with a pin. So please insert them into your smartphone, into a router, into a device where you can disable the SIM pin and afterwards insert the SIM card into your track box. If you don't have the option, but you already have the SIM card when you buy the track box passive, you can also let us know so we can preset the SIM pin on the track box. After you inserted your SIM card, connect the track box to mains power by screwing in the charger it will automatically turn on. If you don't have your track box connected to mains power, you can turn it on by simply pressing the button for roughly one second until you hear the track box beep and it should start blinking. As long as you charge your track box, it will also blink and you will also see the battery status of the track box with this LED. At the moment, the track box is not entirely full, so it is not it is, uh, it is a light green, light red. As soon as the track box is fully charged, it will turn into a strong green. As long as you lay the track box flat, you also see that the blue LED switches off. The blue LED indicates that the UHF reader inside the track box is turned on. If I lay it flat, after a short second, it will turn off. So now the reader is turned off and now you can charge your trackbox efficiently. In order to configure your trackbox, you have two options. You can either configure the trackbox with our setup portal, setup.raceresult.com, or you can also send an SMS to the SIM card inside your trackbox. In order to use the setup portal, setup.raceresult.com, you need to ensure that the SIM card has cell coverage. And you will see this indicated by the LED blink codes on the left hand side. If you see it blink one time red, it will indicate that you don't have GPS. If it blinks two times, it will indicate that there is no network coverage. The blink pattern repeats every few seconds. So now we see one time red. This means no GPS because we are inside our offices, but we don't see two times red. So we know this SIM card has network coverage. What we do next is we open setup.racesult.com. Once you've opened the setup portal, you will need to enter your customer ID and your password. Log in and you will receive the Trackbox config page. Here you can define a few different settings on the Trackbox, which is, for example, the customer ID, which is the APN, which is the name of the Trackbox, a trackping URL, a status URL, and also a number for a info SMS. Most importantly, you will need to configure the customer ID. Once you buy the trackbox, the trackbox will be pre-configured with a customer ID that you've bought the trackbox with. But you, it may happen that you rent the trackbox to a friend, to a colleague, to a fellow timer, or that you simply have two different accounts for buying equipment and for timing your races. So enter your trackbox ID, select the setting that you want to change, and enter the value. Then click save, and then Press the button of the trackbox three times to confirm the setting. 
until you hear a short beep. The track box will then wait for the signal and it will tell you that it has received the new settings by a long beep and you will also see a confirmation on the setup portal. Now the track box has saved the new setting. If you use race result SIM cards, you don't need to set APN, APN user and the APN password. If you use a third party SIM card, then you will most likely need to set up the APN and the user and the password but you will easily find it from Google once you enter your provider and APN. As long as you use race result 12 for scoring only, you will not need to change a tracking URL and the status URL. Please do not touch it unless you know what you're doing. Last, I would recommend to configure a number for the info SMS. Select info SMS, enter your phone number with a country code, save the settings, Press the button of the track box three times until you hear the short beep. Wait for it to confirm with the long beep and the number for the info S will be defined on the track box. What we're going to use the info SMS for, I will tell you later. If your SIM card requires custom APN settings and you cannot connect the SIM card, you don't have any SIM card that connects to, to uh, the network already, but you know the phone number of your SIM card, you can also configure the SIM card by sending an SMS to your track box, or basically the SIM card inside the track box. So that way you can easily send the APN settings, you can send the customer ID, you can define the, exactly the same settings as you can set up through the setup portal, you can send via SMS directly to your track box. That is especially handy if you don't have physical access to the track box, because with the setup portal, Remember, you need to press the track box button three times. So without physical access, it's not possible. But as long as you know the phone number of the SIM card inside the track box, you can also define the setting and change the settings without physical access to the box. You will find further instructions on how to define the settings via SMS on your track box in our knowledge base. Once you have an internet connection with your track box, you can log in into your customer account and open ResResult 12. Navigate into your event file and navigate into timing where you will see the passive track box listed under the passive track box devices. Within the settings for the track boxes, you will find the default track box configuration rules. Within those track box configuration rules, you can apply a few additional settings that you can either apply globally to all of your track boxes or apply to a single track box. And those configuration rules, they apply to your trackbox once they are connected to your customer account. So there is no way to change those settings via SMS or via the setup portal. So they, are, they can only be set via the configuration rules directly from ResResult 12. The configuration rules include the channel on which the trackbox operates. This is not necessary if you only use it for passive transponders, but this is important if you also use the passive trackbox for active tracking, which is also possible. You can define the mode the track box operates in. I would recommend to keep it in normal, but you can also change to standby, fast or slow. You will find further information about the different operating uh, operation modes in our knowledge base. You can lock or unlock the track boxes. This is especially important if you leave the track boxes unattended somewhere along the course. So you can lock the track box. So first, it does not blink any longer. It does not attract even more interest from uh, attendees, from uh, spectators. But also someone else cannot configure your track box unless you unlock the track box. You can define a time frame when the track box should be in auto standby. So imagine you set up the track box the day before the race, but you want to save battery. You know the race will start at 8 a.m in the morning, but you set up the check boxes already 12 hours before, 8 p.m. in the evening. So you can set the auto standby to, for example, 10 p.m. to 6 a.m. in the morning to save battery during those eight hours. You can change the reader power, but I'd rather not talk about it, just leave it to max. You can also define the reader dead time and the reader reaction time, which is exactly the same logic as we also have in our decoder. Last but not least, you can also define a partner that you use for tracking. So track pings and passings will be automatically forwarded to this tracking partner so they can create their tracking visualization.
When you only want to change the settings for one certain box, you click on the device ID and the same window appears, including the track box ID that you're looking at. What else do you see in the timing module? You see whether a box is online or not. Apparently with the trackbox passive, it can only be online because there's no offline connection. You see the device name. You also see the network power. You see the name of the trackbox. If you've configured it um, different from the device ID, you see the time and the time always relates to the time settings in your event file. You see the reader status. So at the moment, the box lays flat because we charge it. So you see the reader is off and it's highlighted also in red. You see the battery status. You also see the noise level, which is also highlighted in red once it gets above 20%. You also see the channel and the memory left, as well as the temperature and whether you have already gotten some reads and the assigned timing point. Now you're basically done with your setup and you can start and play the connection to the trackbox. Now that you know how to configure your trackbox, you might want to know how to set up your trackbox. There's different options. The first option is to set up your trackbox standing on the ground. Option number two is take your trackbox. As it has magnets, you can easily attach it to street posts, to street signs. Or if you have, an, if you have a tripod, you can also attach it to a tripod. Or if you have a camera tripod with a quarter UNC thread, you can use the adapter that we deliver with the track boxes. But where's the difference between a standing track box and a hanging track box? We recommend whenever possible to mount the track box up high, let's say two, 2.5 meters in the air, because there's always the risk that someone is standing in front of the standing track box. And that way he would block the signal, which of course you would not want because that way you might miss a participant. So whenever possible, try to mount the track box hanging on a street sign. And depending on the height, you can then also adjust the angle so it may even face downwards. Now the question might arise, why do we ship two track boxes or why do we sell them as a pair of two? You can use one track box at a time on one side of the road. The detection range of one track box is around four meters. They may detect transponders in up to 25 meters, but please do not exceed the four meters as long as you want to have reliable and good detection rates. So whenever you have a wide road or whenever you have a very dense event, please use track boxes from both sides of the road. And then you can extend it to eight meters. But with both track boxes standing on the ground, I would still say don't exceed six meters. If you have them hanging up high, then you can go until eight meters. When you use two track boxes, the track boxes are smart enough to realize that there's a pair of two track boxes or even more than two track boxes in close distance to each other. So they will switch into a dual sync mode. With that dual sync mode, they will make sure not to overlay the signal in order to not have interference and in order to have the best detection rate possible. When you use two track boxes, you will still need to insert two SIM cards, one in each track box, even though they are, they are synced. Also, Resusal 12 will treat them as two separate devices. So you will also see two detections from a transponder that is read by both track boxes, even though they are synced. Now that you know how to configure your track boxes and you also know how to set up your track boxes, all you need is an event or a test event and a few transponders. So go into your Resusal 12 event file, navigate into the timing module, assign the timing point you want to use the track box for, play the connection, read the transponder and wait for the reads to come in. We all know that at some events you might have some problems. So what should you do if you don't see the track box online? You think you have configured everything, you think you have set up everything, but you still don't see your track box in Resusal 12 in your event file. First, check that the track box is turned on. We see the lights are still flashing, so the track box is turned on. Now we can benefit from the info SMS feature. We've defined the phone number for the info SMS earlier. So all we need to do is press the track box button two times. We hear a short beep 
and the trackbox will send an info SMS to my phone where I can see all settings. I can now see the customer ID, I can now see the name of the trackbox, I can see the trackbox ID, I can see the status the trackbox operates currently in, I can see the battery status, whether it is charging or not, I can also see all the APN settings and I can see the GPS position and the status URL. So as long as the info SMS is working, you can always double check that your trackbox is configured correctly. And as long as it is configured correctly, it will also show in race result 12, as long as you have an internet connection in race result 12 and your event file connected to your customer account. If you don't know the phone number of your SIM card, the info SMS is also a good option, a good opportunity to identify the phone number of your SIM card. So in the future, you can then configure your trackbox via SMS. A second thing that might not go as smooth as you want it to work is you lose cell coverage or your data plan is over during the event. So what, sh what should you do? What can you do? The trackbox still will save all detections in an internal buffer. With all detections, I mean, we have a buffer of 30,000 transponders on the trackbox and another 10,000 on the reader itself. So all in all, you might be able to save up to 40,000 detections on the trackbox. But please do not switch off the trackbox. The memory on the trackbox will only last as long as the trackbox remains turned on. But what you can do, take it to a place where you have network. Or if your data plan is over, you can still unscrew the screws, take off the lid, change the SIM card with a SIM card that is functioning, and then it will automatically upload all detections that are stored on the trackbox. So that way you are still safe. But as I said, as long as you don't get detections because you don't have uh, cell coverage or because your data is over, please keep the trackbox turned on until you have all your passings in your event file. Thanks for watching. I hope this video was very helpful for you for getting started with your track boxes. If you still have any questions, you will find many answers in our knowledge base. You will also find additional and other videos on YouTube about the track box. And of course, our support team is always happy to help whenever you have any questions. Thanks and bye bye.